Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Star Sound Speaks. This is your host, Irliana Samsara, and yay, Andrea Michelle is with us again for eclipse season as promised. Thank you so much for coming back. We missed you, Andrea. It's always so much fun. Thank you, Irliana. Yes. We're so grateful for your brilliance. For those of you who are new to the channel, Andrea is a visionary astrologer, very nuanced, and as you'll see today in our talk around the Aries Libra eclipse access and all the transformation that's available, but on very beautiful, subtle levels. Andrea Michelle Heckel is her website address, and I have the link below. And she also started a podcast, and I want you to go bookmark this one. The Human R Rights Podcast, yeah. The Human Rights, R-I-T-E-S. Correct, yes. And you can grab that link below. These are beautiful deep dive conversations. So today on this podcast, we're going to start this conversation going back to the summer when nodes first went into the Aries Libra axis, July 17th. And then we're going to jump over to the solar eclipse and we're going to talk about what's available over the next year and a half of the transformation of what direction the universe is pushing us to evolve in. And then we're going to zero in on this one coming up October 14th. Buckle your seatbelts. Here comes this amazing deep dive. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that. So yes, we're going to start with the ingress chart because the ingress of the nodal axis from Taurus and Scorpio to Aries and Libra is significant for many reasons. Well, anytime the nodes move from one axis polarity to another, it's one thing, which is huge. But not to mention that the rulers of the nodes switch places, right? So the nodes are themselves just points in space, right? Unless there's a planet conjunct the node, the nodes themselves are just, for the lunar nodes, where the moon's orbit intersects with the ecliptic plane, right? So where the most personal planet, the moon, intersects with the most social and cohesive force in our solar system, the sun, right? So the individual in its relationship with collective consciousness. And so the, the rulers of the nodes, so Taurus and Scorpio, the ruler of the node when, it, when the north node was in Taurus, is, for, is Venus. The ruler of the south node, traditionally, is Mars. So now with Aries and Libra, Aries is the north node, we have Mars now as the ruler of the north node. Venus is the ruler of the south node. So they are the, the place and where they are located in the chart when the nodes move indicates how the nodes are expressing most fully in the foundational like day-to-day -day level right? Because these are planets now. The rulers are the planets of these nodes, which are points in space. So they are indicative of and set the stage for what the theme is for the entire Aries Libra axis for the next two and a half years, which is about the length of time that the nodes are in one particular sign. That's why we're going back there first before we talk about this eclipse. So on the 17th of July of this you know, past year, Mars, which is the ruler of the North Node, was in Virgo, was Pallas Athena. But Pallas Athena, <laughs> so much about her, but she's essentially the goddess of our path. There she is. Okay. She historically can be associated with social justice, right? But she's also very much about owning our integrating feminine power through owning more of our own shadow okay so with Pallas athena with mars there as the north node ruler and Pallas, and the south node ruler venus in leo she's on a fixed star called alphard which is the head of the hydra the hydra is one of the longest constellations in the sky the head of the hydra is the solitary one okay and again, a hydra is a snake. There's something about the transformation that can happen when we willingly and voluntarily remove ourselves from our conditioned responses mm -hmm. within and without. That sometimes it can be lonely to go against social norms and social conditioning. Mm -hmm. But in order, we need to sacrifice Virgo some of the ways we've been conditioned to know what social justice looks like, feels like from the perspective of 
the outer world's metrics, conventional social norms and what's accepted and what's not, to really find our own inward path, Leo, to what it means to be in alignment with what's true, what's right, what's natural law. Mm. And I also want to point out, if you would, Erliana, where Juno is. She's uh, conjunct, serious. Yeah. Serious, exactly, which is where the United States sun is in the Sibley chart. Right. right. We have this so, karmic destiny with Sirius, with the founding of this country. Exactly. And so she can be about contracts, all different kinds of contracts, social contracts, soul contracts. So, so much of what this, these positions of all these planets that I just mentioned right now in this ingress speaks to as a general theme for this whole Aries Libra axis for us for the next two and a half years. Are we willing to risk feeling alone as we clear out old relationship contracts that no longer serve us, including those of the citizenry of the United States with its own government? Yep. Okay, right. I feel you should repeat that again. I just, okay. I'm getting chills as you're talking. So right. um, I feel it's important to repeat Thank that. You. That's a that's a huge sound bite, Missy, what you just said. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So are we willing to risk feeling alone as we clear out old relationship contracts that no longer serve us, including those of the United States citizenry with its contract with the U.S. government? Or any citizen, a citizen of the world with its governments, with these institutions who insist they know what's best for us, right? At the expense of our personal sovereignty and, and ability to choose and be discerning on our own behalf, okay? So our path to sovereignty and individuation is lonely. There's no getting around that in the human life. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I keep getting tears. You, What you're saying here, it's so important. Hmm. Wow, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean no. to interrupt you. But... Yeah, no, I'm glad. It's, it's beautiful that you're grieving this vulnerability. It's it's It's, it's no small thing. It's time, you know, it's like, yeah, that's why people are so angry. You know, they, they feel so many people have felt like they've given up, you know, and then like they can't make it. people are so fed up with both sides of the political parties. It's like, where's the light? Everything just is collapsing. And yeah, but what you're saying is so important. Risking being alone and standing out and speaking up and it's going to make a difference this time because in the old paradigm we we went as far as we could pluto return here we are and the pluto's just about to go direct back on the exact 27 degrees of capricorn the very degree that it was when the declaration of independence was signed so exactly and as you pointed out beautifully before we got on live the progressed pluto for the us chart is at 29 degrees capricorn so we are in this D, D process. And you're absolutely right. This is a, what is the theme for us? Don't go back to sleep. This is the theme of this podcast, of this podcast on the, on the eclipse. So, and, and you know what, Eliana, it's important to, to, to point out that when we risk being alone, and alone means alone with if what is really, really arising in our hearts that is true in our authentic experience, it's going to feel alone because we're going to feel our, our separation from this, the murky matrix of a false homogeny, a false like sense of all for one and one for all, but we've had to give up our own creative sovereignty to do that. But as we do that, or as we risk more of really, really standing in our own heart's light, Venus in Leo, we will find others will be drawn to us, those who are also risking this kind of courage to venture out on their own, North Node in Aries. We will, we will find the universe wants to support us and will support us in finding a new community of people, the ones who are rogue, the ones who are willing to just say no, no more, because it's the devastation of like, the negativity and the being mired and the the shame of 
diverting or you know going against what everybody else is telling me is the right thing to do how it's appropriate to behave how i'm being selfish all of these things it's so this is a time to find people who can support us too mentors that's Pallas Athena too with the North Node ruler. Finding mentors who can assist us in discovering and remembering our own sovereignty, Virgo. Being a mentor for others when it's appropriate, right? So this brand new moon that took place at in Cancer right before this ingress, it amplifies this new, we are starting new. This is a new thing, but this is the, the last deacon of cancer. This is more of an empowered cancer, okay? So it amplifies this newness. And the first line of the Chandra symbol of 25 degrees of cancer, I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but the first line itself is all we need. Inward purpose draws to itself an invisible community of those who are dedicated to the far places together. Mm. Wow, I got chills. And you know what also speaks to that, Andrea, is the Pluto's ingress into Aquarius, finding your tribe, finding the people that you're meant to be with, the there. future self coming into the now and the disruption of that social fabric and finding the tribe that you are authentically connected with. Exactly, exactly. And the feminine way of doing it is to stay put in what's true for me stay put just stay 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 that's the feminine and we will magnetize people will start to arise things will start to show up in my experience this is what we have the weak muscle doing we have the weak muscle of staying and choosing and honoring virgo what is here right staying sovereign to what's true so beautiful yes exactly we have to dismantle the inner paradigm of victim perpetrator consciousness too which you and I had a conversation earlier about that I feel is one of the gifts of the asteroid goddesses, which also makes them quite challenging because they bridge the personal and the social planets. So they really build relationship intrapsychically with where we have been perpetuating this need to fight against something to know who we are rather than letting that go to discover who I am without having to fight or seek or claw my way to find just my little corner of something right so Pallas Athena with Mars again using her sword she was never in battle herself she was the strategist for all of the warriors so we are we taking up our warrior mantle to choose the feminine you and I have talked about this before the action of the feminine is choice it's not doing it's choice so before we do, what are we choosing and where are we choosing from? So cutting the cords of subservience and servitude, Virgo, and amplify the clarity of what needs holding. And what needs holding for us is to get as honest, Virgo, and accurate about where the outer structures that I've been fighting have an inner correlation in me. And that takes a lot of risk. It takes a lot of courage to be willing to do some deep inner work around where does this live in me? Because shadow, evil, what we see as evil outside persists when we can when we only see it as something that's outside of us. So palace is about restoring our feminine power. And with Saturn and Pisces opposing the two, it's about getting honest around where we maintain this victim perpetrator dynamic to give ourselves a sense of purpose when we are not fully connected with our unique path. So the new moon with Pallas Athena Mars, people taking back their power. In order to do that outside, how much are we willing to risk being going against the grain of our own belief structures, our own obstacles that we might be putting in our place before we can see it on the manifest on the outside. And the, the more we are courageously risking that for ourselves, the more we draw others who are courageously risking it's insane. It's it's like an heiress, which we'll be talking about in a moment, really wants to help and is amplifying this. So oh, here, podcast hosts aren't supposed to cry. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> man, I guess I'm just modeling this right now. You're so tender. It's so beautiful to, to witness your tenderness, Liliana. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah. existential moment. Yeah. You know, it's like everything I do is like, oh, plan, 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 you know, type A New Yorker here. It's taken me decades to unfurl that. But and then it's like we just have to let go. And it's so scary to do that. Yes, totally scary. This is exactly right. The Cancer Capricorn axis, the moon and Saturn, the axis of fear, owning our fear as a human being. It's scary to be a human being. We need to attach to rules until we don't. And we can create, you know, the rules are unraveling. The rules of the game as we've known it, Pluto retrograde and Capricorn are unraveling before our eyes. They were only a fantasy, Saturn and Pluto and Pisces to begin with. Nothing is meant to last forever. So what do we find? Where in us do we find that place that is indestructible? That is our place where we can come back over and over again and find where we can choose to love ourselves in the places where it's been too scary to do this before. But we have support. We have a lot of support and we don't have to know what love looks and feels like. That's the scariest thing. Okay. So now this is setting the stage again, the context, right? This October 14th solar eclipse at 21 Libra, this eclipse is ruled by Venus. This is the degree that, that Venus was at. This is where Alphard is and where <laughs> Mars and Pallas. Is. So we have this still this reiteration, reverberation, another rung of the spiral, which is very much associated with Virgo, right? The spiral, cyclical nature of life. So Venus is only five days into Virgo here. So these they're all opposite Saturn and Pisces again here which is preparing to station direct on the 4th of November mm -hmm. after the lunar eclipse on the 28th. That is critical degree, stationary direct degree. Yes. Zero degrees is always a critical degree. You got it. He's on that degree. It's just changing the minutes for weeks now. So this is a heavy Saturn. This is like a, a cruise ship that's coming into port. It's really got to slow down. And, and something with moving with a lot of momentum has to start slowing down pretty soon like so this is like a heavy like coming into port saturn to really accentuate put a fine point on what we've been learning with saturn retrograde in pisces so venus and juno just as an aside have been traveling very very close together in both longitude and latitude and declination from september 9th through october 6th so they're thick as thieves Juno is also extremely, she is the, I would say, the patron goddess of this new Leo Venus cycle. And I speak about that in my Venus calendar. So put a link to that below too, for people to get that Venus calendar. Thank you. It's very critical. The South Node in Venus. Yeah, I think we all need this calendar. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, that's very kind. So they've been traveling close together. And they're opposite Saturn here. So they're at Saturn is asking us if we are still projecting our sovereignty onto others, meaning government systems, right? Systems of government or just corporations to tell us what we should be doing to keep us subservient, right? To keep us in the shadow dynamic because Juno can also be, she's social contracts, but she's also very imbalanced in her shadow element. She can be imbalanced relationships where we give ourselves away to a teacher or a system, a belief, whatever it might be, okay? So if we are still projecting our sovereignty onto other governments or systems, this eclipse may reveal that their support has been all smoke and mirrors. Mm, oh my God, I got chills. Yeah. And when you think about, especially here it is for the United States, Washington, D.C., this is an angular eclipse. Saturn is exalted in Libra. So there is this very direct connection of seeing that false matrix in the government. Of course, this is for the whole world government, but especially here it is for Washington, how powerful this is playing out as we have this Pluto return. So yes, I love that you bring that in. Yep, absolutely. Wow. So this eclipse is in square to the new moon at 25 Cancer back in July when the nodes shifted. It's asking us, how are we doing in this codependency game? Where are we choosing? And, you know, we've got 
transiting Pluto here, squaring, squaring the nodes. So again, like, are we moving to the past? Are we moving back to this codependency? False ethics, just to, to kind of keep everything going. The ships are sinking, but we just want to keep holding on. Or are we courageously venturing into the unknown? And I'm going to speak to Eris in just a second. But again, this, this to me is what this eclipse, the log line is that we talked about. It's challenging us not to go back to sleep. Don't go back to sleep. Saturn in Pisces. Don't go back to sleep. <laughs> Don't go back to sleep. Get clear. Yes. So now with the North Node on Eris. Eris is such a complex, multivalent wisdom stream. I, I, I don't just call them archetypes. I call them wisdom streams that contain archetypes because wisdom stream brings their aliveness. It, it reminds us there is a, there's a sentience, there's an aliveness, there's a life force. Okay. These aren't just things that are outside of us. They are living dynamically within us. These are parts of our own psyche and consciousness, right? So North Node with Eris is amplifying our need to courageously go against these norms and calling out the emperor's new clothes, which is what Eris does best. Okay. Mm, yeah. So I wanted to bring up a very Eurasian figure who just passed, right? Sinead O'Connor. She passed on July 26th. Most of us remember her. She made brilliant music. I mean, her albums, especially The Lion and the Cobra, were, I could not stop listening to them over and over again on repeat when they first came out. Mm. Or I do not want what I haven't got. Her albums had such an impact for me. And most people remember has the woman who ripped up the, the picture of the Pope on Saturday Night Live, right? But she grew up in Ireland, very, very closely embroiled in where a lot of the major controversy was happening all over the world, but where the controversy around the, the sex scandals of the church were happening. She has a very strong heiress in her chart. She had heiress retrograde in her fourth house, so very, very intimate. She also had Black Moon Lilith in her fourth house. And heiress was loosely opposite Mars and Libra in the ninth house. So she was all about calling out the church Injustice. on false ethics and morals, purporting something on the surface, Libra, but completely something underneath, going on underneath the surface. So... Eris, I want to speak to Eris and her association with anarchy as well. Okay. So I looked up the, the etymology of anarchy, and it's it simply means the absence of government, which sounds nice and sounds cool, but it's frightening to really like imagine not having any rules. I mean, on some level it would be fun, but we are also endogenously human, and in the human collective consciousness and unconscious, whether we like it or not, we are embroiled in these codependent matrices of false dependency rather than interdependence. So this is part of the thing that Eris is asking us to cut away from. This Alphard going against the grain, the solitary one. It's all, when we do this, and we do it honestly, we do it with other people. We can do it in a way that is building up sovereignty, that is allowing the codependence, the false codependence, codependence matrix to unravel, but if we do it with, believe it or not, Eris is all about fun. Fun, did you say? Fun. She's about play, which is why she's so scary. Okay, so in terms of an institutionalized regulatory body, that's what the absence of government is. So anarchy means absence of government in terms of an institutionalized regulatory, regulatory body. So I, this is my own words now, Anarchy, as it relates to Eris, means aligning with our natural impulses versus man-made laws. Because mm. the laws that seek to curtail basic freedoms and individual agency are not really in our best interest. Just as you said that, a huge fire truck went by blasting a siren. And I have this thing, some people know this, whenever I hear a siren blasting, it's like, pay attention. Uh, okay, so what you just said, if you could just repeat that line again, because that's that was the where the siren came in. Great. Real spiritual, mystical meaning of anarchy. Yes, is aligning with our natural impulses versus man-made laws that seek to curtail basic freedoms 
and individual agency. Oftentimes we fight against those who go rogue or seem to be selfish and doing their own thing because we're secretly afraid of doing that ourselves and we resent that they're doing something that we don't feel like we have the courage to do. So again, it's easier to blame others or see others as doing it wrong or being selfish than own with love, where am I really just afraid? And I don't want to own that I'm afraid. There's zero wrong about being afraid. It is completely human to be afraid. And when we start to acknowledge just how much so many of our actions are sourced from fear that we don't want to acknowledge and we don't want to know, just that itself starts to give us a little bit more room. We don't need to know how or why, but just to acknowledge it's very human to be afraid starts to dismantle, starts to open up the space for the shadow repression of that fear to give us a little bit more breathing room, okay? Because Aries and Libra is also the axis of the breath. Aries, Aries is the first thing coming out of the womb. Taking a breath, what is it when we first come alive? My, my main teacher, Adam Gainsburg from years ago, he talked about, he calls it instead of the birth chart, the breath chart, because it's when we first take our first breath and that's how the planets become imprinted on us through our breath. Oh, like it's like the switch turns on with the yes, breath. Yes, exactly. I love that, the breath chart. Breath chart. It's been, oh, it's that's brilliant. I love Isn't that. It? Yes. So our inner sovereignty is a form of self-governance that is not at odds with healthy social functioning. Sovereign individuals are intimate with and acting from their true purpose. Sovereign individuals are acting from their true purpose. Yes, they are. That is the definition of sovereignty. It's going to take us a while to get there. Now, this is another thing that we need to really be clear on. Saturn at zero degrees of Pisces. We are just starting to see. We're all waking up in our own way, in our own timing, too. Wow, things have not been as they seem. Even though it feels this way with the North Node in Aries and, and Eris there, it can feel like this pressure to like change things right away. But part of the alchemy of this chart with all this Virgo and Leo here mm -hmm. is to choose sovereignty over and over, to choose where am I willing to risk getting more honest with myself. This doesn't have to be done now. Rome did not fall in a day. Virgo is taking to task one thing at a time and being very discerning being discerning exactly not taking on more responsibility than I need to because that's not going to help anybody least of all me what am I clear that I can do right now and then choose from there that is a source of empowerment that is the source of empowerment so yeah. that's the story in this eclipse cycle Yes, 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 yes. You know what I also think of when you're saying this, with the USA being a 27 Capricorn, here it was when we broke away from King George, the sovereign, this guy on a throne in London. Consciousness has so vastly shifted in 248 years, and now we're seeing how it's it's an inside job, and it's, it's not about finding some new government that's going to take care of us. It's like, no, Pluto is just trashing all <laughs> all of yes, it yes very good very good exactly exactly the more honest we can get with the reverberations of where the inner and outer are inextricably linked the faster we will start to really take ownership and and be in this place of wow something building the seeds the foundations Saturn stationing direct at zero Pisces for a new era of truth and kindness, where kindness is our religion. Isn't that what the Dalai Lama says? Mm -hmm. Kindness is his religion. Saturn in zero degrees Pisces, retrograde going direct, a societal fabric that's built on compassion and love and this devotion to these higher realms of being, Pisces. 
and what do we have to sacrifice? I went to Catholic school. Sacrifice is you had this cardboard box and you, it lent before Easter. You, yeah, they, they gave us a cardboard and you put pennies in. You weren't supposed to eat candy. You were sacrificing right. candy, right? And it was like, oh, this is hard. All they ever focused on was what you were giving up. Nobody yes. focused on the gain. Exactly. So, you got it. it. And exactly. And and what you're saying, Juliana, is so true. And how do we bring the, the Piscean principles down to earth, Saturn? Right. How do we build it from the ground up? The demolition that Pluto is doing in Capricorn. I talk about refecundating Capricorn with the waters of Cancer. Capricorn has forgotten its source. It's the, it's the seagull in the, the constellation. Right. The and it's feminine Earth. Capricorn's feminine Earth. Yeah. Yes, that's right. You got it. So that's all I got. This is this, this is, is uh, the the pith. <laughs> the pith. Right. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, there's always so much more, but you know, there's no point in just going into. It's like what is the what is the nugget? And again, the not going back to sleep. What we're being challenged in this. Oh, but you wanted to ask beautifully around wherever this is happening, whatever houses this is happening in your charts, people, is those are the areas of life where be prepared because what are eclipses? They they undercut linearity. They take us out of our normal sense of time. And anything is possible. But we get scared with that much freedom. We get terrified when the rules and the ground that we've known is is out from underneath us, but but Saturn in Pisces, we've been practicing, ideally. What is it like to feel the ground underneath us dissolving, right? This is all practice for maybe the ground underneath dissolving isn't as bad as I thought. Maybe it makes room for something. And what is here? What is left? And so this mm -hmm. is, wherever that's happening in your chart is giving yourself space to not have to do things the way you've normally done them leading up to this eclipse window and afterward and allow that to be like allow yourself to be informed with information that might come from in non-linear ways you might be unaccustomed to pay attention to those don't necessarily take them all at, at face value but write them down draw them be creative with them and just allow them to unfold in their own timing don't necessarily again grip onto them right away Saturn and Pisces is like, don't try to create something new or like new forms yet. It's not time, but find where in, in the in the refuge of your heart, Venus and Leo, you have what you need. You have more resources than you than you know, including the community, like that Chandra symbol, which is exactly what I was saying around the individuation is lonely, but we magnetize people. Inward purpose draws to itself an invisible community of those who are dedicated to the far places together. But the invisible community will become visible over time. We just have to develop mm. the faith and the trust in the choices that we're making. And then Saturn and Pisces too is like, you think that the ground you were standing on was was ideal? Well, guess what? It's There's something better. And this yes. is actually toxic, but you'll come to see that. And you're like, oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. It's, it's wild. And so we're going to reconvene for the lunar eclipse because it is the last one of the Taurus Scorpio cycle. And that'll be our next conversation. These are wild cards. Give ourselves a lot of space. There's a lot that gets dismantled. That can be scary. So be really kind with yourself. These are cardinal sign eclipses. So this is yeah. significant initiatory Very much. changes. I remember my dear friend who's passed on, she was an astrologer, and she used to say, eclipses bring magical, incongruous, nonlinear change. Mm. She also always urged me to, you know, you have your chart, you know where eclipses are going to be happening, do the work ahead of time. Mm. When you really engage and you know what archetypes are at play, then it's we're not going to get blindsided if we remain unconscious, the eclipse cycle will be tough on us because it's got to take away what's not working. But if yeah. we are proactive with it, 
it's just going to make it a lot easier. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. Yay. Website, andreamichelleheckel.com. Look down below. you see the link. Go to the YouTube channel. Get that podcast. Get that Venus calendar. We're good. <laughs> All right, my dear. Well, mwah, big love to you. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And for everybody else, let us know how you're doing. We are here for you. Our invisible community becomes visible. Yes, right on. All right, this is Irliana Samsara and Andrea Michelle Heckel wishing you the best eclipse season. We will see you soon. Bye for now.